The Extraordinary Gift is a story that's told every year at this time and it never gets old. It's a story that starts in a pretty dark place with a God who is love and creates a whole race, a race, humankind, that kind of corrupts itself, eating fruits in a garden, knocking God off the shelf, and with Cain killing Abel and Towers of Babel, and in all of these fables, a deadly truth beyond reproof, a fall from grace. But this God who is grace doesn't leave us like this, wrapped in wrong, steeped in sin, lost and listless, but history changes as his story turns some new pages and turns to some words bellowed down through the ages by prophets who railed against Israel's disgraces and spoke of a saviour who'd come and who'd save us. They prophesied some extraordinary things of God's glory revealed. See how Isaiah sings of valleys raised up and mountains made low, lions lying with lambs down together, and ho, oh, how the hungry will eat and the thirsty will drink as the virgin gives birth to the king of kings. Into our darkness, the light shines upon us. The word became flesh and dwelled among us. Now at school I was taught every good story needs a beginning, a middle and an ending that feeds the soul with wonder and leads us to gasp. So let's see how God's story tackles the task. It all starts with Mary, an ordinary girl who's minding her own business when suddenly her world becomes scary as Gabriel in splendour appears and says, Mary, you're favoured, your saviour is near. She says, what? He says, yes. She says, me? He says, you, you're the mother of God. You know what God can do. Extraordinarily, Mary says, just as God pleases and promises that she will name the child Jesus. Into our darkness, the light shines upon us. The word became flesh and dwelled among us. In the middle of the story, a journey is made. Joseph takes his betrothed to the city of David. That's because Joseph descends from a line that is royal. And Joseph, by the way, decides to stay loyal to Mary, believes her extraordinary story that inside her, she carries the Prince of Glory. And because of a census dictated by Rome, he is looking for lodging in his Bethlehem home, but it's busy and crowded. And with no place to stay, Mary gives birth outside, lays her son in the hay, and just like that, we hear Christ's cradle cries, and just like that, angel hosts fill the skies. Into our darkness, the light shines upon us. The word became flesh and dwelled among us. Picture the scene on this birthday of Christ. Angels sing peace on earth and glory in the highest. How extraordinary to sing of this birth ignominious in the time of Augustus and Governor Quirinius. And if you think that this story couldn't get more absurd, the first ones to visit the sun brought a herd or a flock of their sheep for some shepherds were told the Messiah's been born. He's not yet one day old. And as they entered in, Mary welcomed the stranger, and they saw, wrapped in cloth, God's son in the manger. It's a message, a metaphor, where this story ends, that through Christ, God is making the whole world his friends. Into our darkness, the light shines upon us. The word became flesh and dwelled among us. <laughs>